Hi everyone, this is Tim here from Reach Markets and Implied Volatility. So we'll just start the day um, with a quick update on, uh, on a few things in the market. So first of all, um, quite interestingly, uh, the Australian dollar has been dipping quite low. Um, the ABS has announced that retail spending fell by an unexpected 0.1% in July and it did later rebound from that level. And um, it's currently buying, as of 5 p.m. yesterday, 67.24 US cents. And with regards to the market this morning, so the market has uh, opened a bit lower. And um, just pulling it up here. And while you're doing that, uh, Ivan, just I'm dialing in. Just reminding you that any advice contained within this presentation general advice only does not consider your objectives, financial situations and needs. Uh, apologies to Tim and the guys for not being able to make it today. Um, I also can't see the screen, so, so we'll see how we go. Um, but while Tim's bringing up uh, that chart, maybe I'll just talk a little bit about the market um, before we sort of move into other territory. Um, obviously, yep, as you mentioned, market's down a little bit lower today. Um, this will now be the third down day in a row. Um, not that that in itself is important, but it is important that the market isn't going anywhere. So um, the, the, obviously the level that we're looking at is a 50-day moving average, as we looked at last week and the week before. We still can't get above it. So the, the big thing is, is really that a lot of traders are looking at is, is some of this data going to start uh, dragging the market lower now? Um, if it's not going to continue, uh, if, if it fails to have momentum anywhere above, uh, really, uh, the level that we're probably looking at at the moment is 6,600 <clears throat> with, with a little bit of a clip above. Um, it's failed there now uh, a couple of times, uh, twice in, in particular, especially when it closed right on the, on, on the high there at the end of August. Um, last night was the first trading session in the US. They had a holiday on the Monday. <clears throat> so it'll be very important to see how it will rebound. Uh, the next day, it actually, the markets last night weren't really moving a whole heap. Uh, a lot of the losses were priced in on the Monday, uh, which we really should have priced in, uh, but we ended up losing about 30 points uh, today, uh, right about the open, and it really hasn't moved much from there. So a couple of key things to watch, as I said, the 50-day moving average is 6,600 level uh, is crucial, um, and on the downside, uh, it's just sort of really the, the levels that we're going to be looking at uh, in, in the very near, ter near term to see if we can take out some of those lows below. Um, uh, 6,400 really in particular, a strong close below 6,400 with a bit of volume would probably indicate that, that we're in for, a, for another lower leg um, and uh, really the, the next level would be the 200 day moving average if not lower. So. Uh, we'll see what happens when we get there. Um, a couple of things today which are quite interesting. Um, well, actually, probably the, there's two standouts. Uh, if you go into the strategy builder, <coughs> into the stock screener, the two stocks that are actually holding up today um, uh, is uh, Fortescue is doing quite well. Quite well. Newcrest is approaching 52 week highs, which is quite interesting. And oil search um, is, is a big one. Um, uh, it, uh, popped up a fair bit today, um, despite going ex dividend. So um, a couple of good news, a bit, a bit of new good news has made it sort of hold uh, 52 week low or thereabouts. Um, otherwise, a pretty red day. So a couple of things to watch out for there. Um, Tim, what have you got to add? You're yeah, looking at the IB ranks here. We've got um, New Crest Mining at the. Um right at the top with an IV rank of 91. It's been an interesting run with the price of gold um, being quite high, quite high. It's interesting to see the volatility come into Newcrest Mining and uh, Regis Resources as well. Um, we've also got um, Harvey Norman, Whirly Parsons and uh, Simic Group still uh, with high volatility as well. Um, high volatility is a good option if we expect the market to uh, straighten out to get an extra bit of premium when selling um, the uh, the closer legs on the iron condors. Yeah. The interesting thing, you know, you, you said Newcrest, it's obviously something that I mentioned as well. Um, 
So it's now at the highest level. Volatility is at the highest level it's been since the middle of 2017. Um, and uh, obviously it's had a big move up uh, earlier this year um, and it's been a non-stop move higher and it's sort of now starting to <clears throat> maybe it had a bit of a, a fork in the road um, and then it, it continued uh, and it's now again close to 52 week highs despite the underlying market being relatively weak so it's definitely one to watch and um, a little long uh, it's probably not that far away um, and it would be also interesting to see. Um, there's probably a good chance that uh, Newcrest will pop up as an iron condor um, soon in the quant ideas. I would think with the way that it's been moving. Let's pull it up on the screen here now. There we go. Yeah, so it has been flagged for lit longs for quite a long period of time. And it has performed mm. very well as a let long trading strategy. Um, yeah, it might be time to for a, for an iron condor. Mm. Well, the things that we're looking at is the distance between the moving averages and the distance away from that moving average. So you think of it starting to move up a little bit higher, plus the higher implied volatility. You think that there's, there's some stuff, there's some potential for a trade there soon. Guys, yeah. are there any trades that you want us to look at um, uh, over the course of the session uh, or any questions? Obviously, we had a very big Q&A session last week. And Tim, you're going to have to read them out if, if you do see them because they don't have access to it. Yeah, sure. So we've got um, one question here. Is uh, CTX still an iron condor? Uh, is CTX still an iron condor? No, it's not been coming up as an iron condor. <clears throat> where, the, question, the next question is, it's where, where are you in from and um, where, uh, where are your legs? Yeah, so we've got, um, it was on the 9th of the 8th, would have been the last time that we entered into CTX as an iron condor. I think it did pop up after that. Yeah, it may have popped up since then. Um, actually, yeah, it might have popped up since then. They get the first one from uh, the current rate of expiries. Yeah, there's was around, one um, end, of, end of August there was one. Yeah, okay. In the August as well. Yeah, so it would have been about the 23rd, uh, probably. And then it would have come up again on the 29th. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So again, the question here is... When did the... Uh, what were the legs of the CTX iron condor that we put on? Yeah, what were the legs of the, um, of the trade, Carl? It was last week as well. Yeah, end of. Well, we're um, waiting for a response on that. We'll jump over to another one, AGL. Yep. Yep. Yeah, AGL is interesting. Well, actually, I was, I, was, I was looking at this yesterday. Um, we're going to have a look um, over the course of next week as to how it's uh, how the role is going. Um, it's probably it's a little bit early to make a decision now. If it's done actually okay since we've rolled. Um, I can't say it's, it's done spectacularly, um, but it is up a little bit. Um, what we're going to be watching for is uh, to see how far away we are from really that 1950. Uh, if we can get to above 19, to around about 1950 by, I think, middle of next week, um, we'll continue running that a little bit longer. Um, otherwise, before it gets too late in the piece, uh, we're possibly going to look at re-rolling it again uh, a little bit further. And, and again, that the reasons that we got into this was uh, the reason why we decided to do the, the role of these legs was because um, the market really is coming up towards the support level and despite all of the bad news, the stock was actually holding up relatively well. So in terms of um, what we're looking at, 
um, we were effectively what we got into is we we're expecting a bounce. So we're going to a, a, a bullish AGL type trade. Um, with where we're at at the moment, I, I, interestingly enough, completely unrelated, I had a look as to how much roll would be yesterday, um, and it's roughly sitting at about four cents. Um, ideally, the level gets a little bit higher before we get it. Now, at that point in time, um, coming up to next week, we're probably, probably going to start making a decision uh, sort of around the middle of next week as to whether we want to roll it or close down the position, uh, depending on where it's at. Um, and the big reason for doing that is because the time decay is starting to work against us. Um, and by next week, at the end of next week, it's going to start getting to the last two weeks of the trade where the time decay becomes really serious. Um, time decay won't be an issue for us it gets out to around about 1975 or so, uh, which is 60 cents away from yesterday's settlement. Um, so this, 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 it's a trade that we're monitoring closely. So you're cutting out a bit there, Ivan? Sorry, so this, this, it's a trade that we are monitoring closely at the moment. If we've got another one here, um, we'll go back to CTX. So we've got so we've got a, a bought put at 22, sold put at 23, sold call at 25, bought call at 26. Fair enough. Sorry. And and what's the uh, what's the question related to that? Is it still a good trade or? Um, is, it, is it still a nine condor? Uh, look, it's it's not popping up anymore. Is it still within the range? Yes. Um, obviously, the stock is at 24 and hasn't done anything since, I believe, it was the 29th um, is, is when that iron condor got published. Um, however, since then, the implied volatility has come off. So you're not going to get as much for it. So there was still reward stuff you're getting skewed. Uh, so it may pop up again in the next couple of days or so. Um, if it doesn't really do anything, because it's doing at the moment, but um, again, we'll, we'll just have to um, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Okay. And I've also got a question here for uh, BHP. Um, any trades given it goes ex dividend tomorrow, and what is the iron ore price doing? Just got a chart here of the iron ore price at the moment. Um, sitting around the $90 mark, um, and I'll pull up the chart for BHP now. Uh, so just, just in terms of um, specifically looking at iron, iron, iron ore price to go on and start predicting the price of BHP, um, I, I get logic in that, it's just not the way that we trade. Um, because we're looking at specific stocks. If, in my view, if you want to get access to a commodity, the best way to do it is through the commodity market. Um, so iron ore is difficult to get access to, very difficult to get access to, um, because effectively you've got to trade forwards with no intention of settling them. Um, but if, for example, if you're looking at gold, it's very little value in trading gold through, say, a gold miner. Because there's so many other funda so many other so many other fundamental factors that go into the price of that underlying stock, profit and loss, fundamentals, all that kind of stuff. Whereas if you literally just want to get exposure to gold, the easiest way to do it is to go and buy from gold. Um, the same thing with BHP. Although there is correlation between um, and BHP is, and by the way, the best example to get access to uh, if you're picking a stock to get access to iron ore, iron ore. but if you are looking at, let's say, BHP, you really should be looking at BHP as a company. Sure, it's going to have exposure to the iron ore market, but the correlation isn't as close as you think, mostly because every big company hedges out their exposure to iron ore and currency and any other um, any other things that they dig out of the ground. So that's probably an answer for that. In terms of is there anything at BHP at the moment that we're looking at? No, if not below the 52-week low. So we're not going to be looking at like longs or lead shorts, um, in particular the shorts. Um, and it's not meeting the rules for an iron condor because volatility is pretty low. And we've got another question here. With an iron condor, is the aim to have it trading within the range of the sold legs? 
And if it isn't, roll it. Um, is it the aim to have it between the sold legs? Yes, um, because that's going to be the, the maximum profit of the trade. Uh, in terms of if it's not going to roll it, uh, depends on the situation. So if you do decide to roll the sole, uh, the, the part that is, that, that is in the money, you're effectively putting yourself into a position that becomes different. So we were speaking about this last week. So let's say that, um, uh, let's say, you know, if you go out and ponder, you put on it, the sold put spread, sold put spread, sold call spread. So let's say the market falls and your put spread is now in the money. Um, you effectively, like AGL would be a good example. So the, the, the stock went against us. And what we decided to do is to roll the put spread into the next calendar month. And by doing that, what we actually effectively did, because we didn't adjust the strikes, uh, we kept them as they were, we actually uh, ended up effectively saying that we were taking a bullish view on AGL, uh, no longer a neutral view. And we were saying that what we expected is going to come back and try and retry the range, whether it be 1950 or 20. Um, and that's, that's something that we're making. If you're going and saying when you're rolling that your risk parameter is still neutral, then you actually would close down the put spread and then go in and put in another iron condor around the price that it's at, at that point in time. If you're just rolling the put spread, then you're expecting that the market's going to go up. And if you're rolling the call spread, you're expecting the market is, 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 getting, is, going, to, is, is going to go down. So it's very important that um, you understand the risk profile of what you're trying to achieve by rolling. Generally speaking, Personally, I absolutely despise rolling unless everything is lining up to give us reason to go on and do that particular trade. Perfect. And do we have any other questions at the moment? Any other stocks you want us to run through? Guessing the silence means no. Um, guys, uh, obviously, a fair bit um, going on at the moment in the market, lots of fundamentals, um, lots of economic global factors that are, that are starting to really weigh down, lots of economic data that's coming, and things that we're looking at, trade was Brexit, we're looking at um, a continuation of the inverting yield curve. Uh, last night, the market accelerated its losses on the back of manufacturing index coming in and signaling contraction in the US. Um, Australian data isn't much better, um, and thus the the rate cut that some expected yesterday that didn't come uh, was effectively delayed. And the messaging from the RBA was that uh, they're open to further rate cuts later down the track once they see uh, ultimately the tail of this kicking in and seeing how the economy responds. Um, there are so many things going on in the market at the moment, which interestingly enough, if, if you're a, a trader trading economics and data, you would be really struggling right now because uh, the fundamentals are completely different to, to where the market's actually been for, for quite a while. But having said that, um, stick to your rules, stick to your trading systems, um, whether you're following ours or whether you're doing your own, and uh, take note of when the market is breaking. I think we're about to enter an extremely exciting period in the market, uh, whether it's going to either catch everyone off guard and just completely um, snap back and go higher, um, or it's going to go do the complete opposite, which is it's going to catch everyone who is long off guard um, and then and then sell off. So uh, I think that we're probably either at that inversion point or about to be um, at, uh, well, I guess an inflection point, I should say. Uh, we're at a pretty serious pivot point at the moment. Um, and just be ready. Um, you know, this is the time to put in, have a look at all the different stocks, analyze them, see there's the ones that you like or don't like, and then when things start moving, get on the side um, and see, uh, see how it plays out. Got another question here. If if everyone suspects a recession from the inverted yield curve, wouldn't that not be a recession cause? I.e., everyone can already see it. 
Uh, <laughs> uh, sure. Uh, I don't think that necessarily that means anything. If you think about the flow of money uh, into the stock market, um, ultimately what moves prices is supply and demand. Sure, everyone might be seeing a recession, but eventually negative earnings um, and the weaker market is going to start kicking in into the market. The question is, is whether the stock market ignores it, like it's continuously done so, which is why, you know, if you look at bonds, they've completely sold off. 30-year um, German bonds were trading at uh, minus 0.78 yesterday, right? It's, it's ridiculous as to how pessimistic bonds have been about everything going on. Um, and continuously stocks have rallied. So eventually the um, lack of negative correlation between bonds and stocks is going to have to break down and, oh, I should say yields, um, and uh, something is going to give. Um, the question is, is, is cheap money going to continue fueling the rally further or whether it's not? I don't think it's a question of whether a recession is bad for stock prices. It definitely is bad. And eventually, you know, you get a 20% pullback just on the back of that. The question is, is when does it drop? So, and I think that's a question that we've all been uh, battling for quite a while. Um, a lot were, were buried from 2009, right, which obviously didn't go very well unless you were trading bonds. So, um, yeah, that's probably the best answer I can give you to that. We've got another question here. Can you see any iron condor opportunities on the XJO? Um, I wouldn't, honestly, just, just at the moment. Uh, and the big reason for this is um, it's just a little bit in a, in a, in a funny situation. Um, I think that on one side, sure, you know, the, the, I guess the white and up iron condor, you'd think it, it's going to stay in that 50 to 100 day moving range or moving day range for a while. Um, but having said that, personally, just looking at it, there's just not enough um, volatility in it. There's just not enough premium in it. And also, there's a couple of factors that I'm looking at which mean that it's probably much more likely, in my mind, that the market goes lower uh, than higher. And if it does go lower, I think the overall move is going to be much more, am much more amplified than a move higher. So if I was forced and put a gun to my head and said to put on our condor, I'd be pushing the put, the put spread lower um, and the call spread probably a little bit closer to, to where the 6600 range is um, and just giving it a little bit more space on the downside. But the thing that I'm afraid of and when I would be looking at our condor is if we get a, a sell off of two, three, four hundred points and then volatility shoots up and then people are expecting the end of the world. And that's probably the only time that I actually look at it um, in, in seriousness. Perfect. And do we have any further questions? Perfect. Well, thank you very everybody. Um, I'll, I'm planning to be in the office next week, so we can we, we can do it um, all in the one room to make it easier. Keep your questions coming. If you've got anything that you want to ask us. Uh, whether it be related to current markets or whether it be related to options trading, um, anything aside from, you know, your life, uh, which you probably don't want to uh, comment on, uh, but everything to do with trading or finance, uh, ask us a question and um, either ask it to Tim or put it into the blue box uh, circle on, on the bottom and we'll get to them next week. Um, and enjoy your trading. Hopefully it goes all for you over the next week. I appreciate your time. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thank you.